Who would have thought that such experienced managements of two major American automakers would be so naive to enter the EV transition at full throttle, with projections that were based rather on momentum than deep analysis? Well, it happened. Both Ford and GM are now fighting their toughest battle in decades. They're switching to electric cars, and in that transition, they are losing billions, as EVs are piling up on dealer lots. GM and Ford are shocked, and we will explain to you why, but before that, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button, because more content like this is coming. EVs are slowing down. Remember the time when Mary Barra, GM CEO, was proudly announcing a plan to sell 400,000 EVs by mid-2024? Well, that's not going to happen, because the figures are nowhere near the projected. EVs are cooling down, and the segment now grows at a significantly slower rate than it used to just a year ago. After a couple of years in a row with an impressive year-over-year -year growth of over 90%, the last year was a little bit different. In 2023, that growth fell down to around 40%, and in GM's case, this brings us to the number of around 100,000 electric vehicles sold during the last year. Does anyone have a magic formula to quadruple the sales in just a few months? GM management doesn't. But GM isn't the only automaker with an electrification plan that falls apart. The Blue Oval Company has the same trouble. After pretty impressive initial years of models like Mustang Mach-E, we are now at the point where the market day supply is over 200 days, where there are nearly 20,000 all-electric Mustangs currently sitting at dealer lots waiting for new owners. The F-150 Lightning also had an amazing start, so the company proudly announced 200,000 online reservations. But soon enough, sales slowed down significantly, and now Ford is cutting production of its electric pickup by half. This decision will cut the losses. It will also affect many employees, around 1,400 according to the officials. From what we know so far, the Rouge EV Center will produce the electric pickup in just one shift. 700 workers will be transferred to the truck plant in Michigan, while the other half will get new roles at Rouge or other facilities in southeast Michigan. Finally, the company will also offer some buyouts through retirement incentive programs, something that was agreed in the new UAW contract. GM and Ford are not isolated cases. The whole EV market is slowing down, as mentioned. Reasons are numerous, but experts like to point out that the era of early adopters is over. Tech geeks and wealthy households already got their EVs, while on the other hand, the rest of the population still hesitates with this transition, for a set of reasons. Starting from high prices, range anxiety, charging infrastructure, and other issues. Ford and GM are losing money on EVs. Not only that, companies like Ford and GM struggling to sell their EVs, but they are also losing huge amounts of money. Because we are talking about the biggest transition in the history of the automotive industry. And with new players in the game, with companies like Tesla, legacy car makers are forced to invest tremendous money to gain new technology and remain competitive. They invested billions in new technologies, but sales are still low, while the production process is far from optimized. In other words, they haven't cracked the EV economy. They haven't figured out how to make money on EVs. Instead, every single car maker, except for Tesla, is currently losing money on EVs. But Ford's situation is particularly bad because the Blue Oval Company is losing billions. It lost around $1.1 billion in the second quarter of 2023. Next quarter, it lost $1.3 billion. Then Tesla started a price war, which forced Ford and other legacy automakers to slash prices even more just to sell out the current inventory. Eventually, Ford came to the point where it was losing nearly $40,000 on every F-150 Lightning it sold, while the overall loss for 2023 is estimated at over $5 billion. In such circumstances, Ford's management was forced to take special measures. We are talking about saving capital, about saving what can be saved. The management made a decision to push back EV investments worth $12 billion and make some pretty big revisions in terms of production plans, including the production of the F-150 Lightning, which has been cut by half, as mentioned. Things aren't much different in GM. This company also has been losing millions due to slower-than-expected sales and a little bit odd strategy. 
You probably remember Mary Barra's announcement about how GM won't be producing cheap EVs because they don't bring profit. The only problem is that most GM brands are mainstream, associated with affordable prices. People aren't used to paying $60,000 on a Chevy crossover, so it doesn't surprise that the company is still nowhere near the projected 400,000 EVs by mid-2024. Instead, it looks like the company has run out of money and now is postponing some of the most important EV projects planned for this year. We are primarily thinking of the production of two all-electric trucks, Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra, which has been moved to 2025. The production of a new drive unit has also been delayed, moved to toward the end of this year. Dealers don't want to sell EVs. Dealers are anything but happy to sell EVs, and particularly angry because the two automakers rather listen to the government, which came up with that overly ambitious plan to make two-thirds of new cars all electric by 2032. If anyone knows what customers want, that would be dealers, and they warned that people are still not ready to accept the EV transition so fast. They even wrote to Biden with the request to slow down with all this, but it looks like no one is listening to them. And now they are stuck with EVs they can't sell. Dealer lots are stacked with EVs, to that point that models like Mustang Mach-E are currently at more than 200 days of market supply. As for the market day supply of GM models, the Cadillac Lyric is currently at 151, which is two times higher compared to the industry average. Moreover, automakers are insisting on all kinds of EV certifications, which would make dealers eligible to sell EVs. Charging infrastructure, training, and other requirements, all these things cost a lot. In Ford's case, the expenses go up to $1 million. And with the low profit potential, it doesn't surprise that half of Ford dealers nationwide don't want to apply for the certification program. And while the Blue Oval Company still doesn't force dealers on such a move, some GM brands do. Buick, for example, gave dealers the ultimatum, and as a result, this brand, which doesn't even sell EVs at the moment in North America, lost half of its dealers only in 2023. GM's most important brand, Chevrolet, still doesn't force dealers to make such a move, but experts say it's just a matter of time before this happens, considering Barr's ambitious plans and huge investments made over the last few years. Besides slow sales, there are a few more practical reasons why dealers are not delighted with EVs. With the current oversupply and massive discounts, dealers are currently not in a situation to take massive markups, like they do with the hottest-selling gas-powered counterparts. Finally, there are the salesmen, who are not delighted with the fact that they have to put way more effort into selling EVs. On average, a typical sale of a gas-powered car takes one visit and about an hour. With EVs, customers usually pay four visits before they finally decide to purchase such a vehicle, meaning that salesman had to work four times more to earn the same commission. Price as Deal Breaker To put it in simple words, EVs are slowing down because the masses are still not ready to accept new ways of transportation. Reasons are numerous, but eventually it all comes down to prices. Even though they are getting cheaper, EVs are still way more expensive than gas-powered cars. In the last year, the average EV purchase was nearly $60,000, which is still way over the industry average. Consumers are rational, and they don't want to pay premium prices just to save the environment. Because besides zero emissions, we can't say that EVs have too many advantages over gas-powered cars. Yes, they accelerate quicker, but other than that, not much is on the table. Traditional internal combustion cars offer way superior range, not to mention the level of convenience that comes with refueling, which takes just a couple of minutes, compared to hours spent at public charging stations with EVs. But let's get back to the cost. Everyone expects EVs to be more expensive at this stage, on the other hand, no one expected them to have such high running costs. In theory, EVs should be cheaper to run, but this short experience we had with EVs has taught us that the reality is a little bit different. Charging is payable only at home, while public chargers often cost as much as gas. Also, the latest surveys show that EVs are significantly less reliable than gas-powered cars, while repairs cost more due to the lack of trained professionals. 
Car accidents are particularly tricky because of the way batter housings and some other parts are designed, which also leads to higher repair costs. Finally, for all these reasons, the insurance premiums are significantly higher. Hybrids are new reality. We could all agree that Ford and GM made big mistakes when they decided to push EVs hard by skipping one very important step in this transition, hybrid technology. Now, both companies are revising their plans and focusing more on hybrid cars. It turns out that Akio Toyota was right and that this gradual approach is the way to go. Hybrids were a big hit over the last year and now account for 8.3% of the new car market in America, while EVs are still below 8%. People are accepting this technology much easier for practical reasons. Hybrids are significantly cheaper than EVs and don't bring range and charging anxiety with themselves. Now both companies are willing to deploy hybrid technology, particularly in the most critical segments such as SUVs and pickup trucks. Soon enough, hybrids will be rolling out from assemblies of both companies as a bridge between gas-only and fully electric vehicles. Among other models, Ford is already selling a hybrid version of the F-150 pickup truck. GM, on the other hand, will have to put much more effort because this company completely neglected hybrid technology in the last few years. Are hybrids the way to go for companies like GM and Ford, or it's too late to catch up with Toyota? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.